welcome to my video that is going to be about a myriad of things, but ultimately about living with dyslexia and, you know, uh, what that kind of can do on your psyche. I just find that in Australia, you know, dyslexia isn't really discussed that often. Um, and the, the kind of mental detriments that can occur if it's untreated or if, uh, I'm sorry about the squeaky chair, or if, you know, you also have a lot of other things going on behind the scenes of your own psyche that you just weren't aware of. Um, and, you know, other people's uh, sort of pain that you yourself take in because you think, you know, your dyslexia is causing this issue. Um, and I should also definitely say that I am not a psychologist or anybody with any kind of medical history. I just have a lot of experience with these topics personally and I think that it's really nice to have a conversation a conversational place <laughs> like a video essay or a podcast or you know what have you and I am you know only just graduated my <laughs> only not even graduated my bachelor yet so that's about as as far as um, I'm qualified in any way but you know that's a fine arts degree like you know you have to go and um, <laughs> like actually do courses in psychology and you know whatever areas that you're interested in to influence your art and I haven't done that yet so you know I'm very interested in psychology so is my sister she's thinking of studying which is awesome and uh, I think I might study something with the environment maybe who knows but either way the life experience that comes along with I mean I'm only 20 please. <laughs> the life experience is minimal, but <laughs> you know, I am just talking from an early educational sort of place. So my audience is probably young, younger adults, um, 22 and younger, because I'm never going to advise somebody who's older than me on, on much, because I don't, you know, like, I'm not even there yet. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just stick 21 to freaking like 16 or something like that's the my past that I'm drawing on and you know <laughs> like I just want to share you know some of the things that have happened to me and how I did or did not deal with it anyway so I'm just going to give you an overview of dyslexia also this is not <laughs> like the rule book it's different to each person I personally got diagnosed last year at the age of 21, and I am severely dyslexic, <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm also a tad nervous. Never done this platform before, but let's do it. Plus everyone can see me sitting here, because I'm on the street level, so that's also added nerves. But you know what, so overview. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to letters or words brackets decoding also called reading disability dyslexia affects areas of the brain that process language people with dyslexia have normal intelligence and usually have normal vision so there's no cure for dyslexia early assessment and intervention intervention result in the best outcome. Um, sometimes dyslexia goes undiagnosed, undiagnosed for years and is not recognised uh, until adulthood, which happened to me. But, you know, it's fine. You have to deal with the <laughs> life situations that you're in to get through them. And so, I'm just reading this from the Mayo Clinic. And that's just because I've found that their overview of dyslexia is pretty accurate to what I deal with <clears throat> and what the doctor said about me. 
it is very good, very thorough evaluation. So they break it down in before school and school age and teen and adult. I'll briefly read what it's like um, before school because I think that these, one of these really happens in adulthood for me. So, you know, late talking, learning new words slowly, um, and problems forming words correctly, such as reversing sounds in words or confusing words that sound alike. And that happens in my adulthood, <laughs> like pretty badly. Um, I'm just gonna like really run through these because you can let's just look on them online and I just want to get right into what it's actually going to be about. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have such a janky equipment, but that's okay. So, I've also made a few videos about this, but I didn't actually set them up correctly and they're all useless, so I'm tired about talking, <laughs> tired of talking about them, I suppose. Um, yeah, so school age is, well, your reading is well below what everyone else is, so if you're in grade 5, maybe your reading skills are at, you know, second grade and that would mean that they're below the rest of the class and so you're kind of falling behind a little bit in reading. Um, problems processing what they're hearing and like kind of figuring out what that actually means. Difficulty finding the right word for forming answers to questions. Which I have issues with that now um, and I am classified as an adult. So, I mean a young adult, but you know. <clears throat> so, basically that this comes into the communication part of dyslexia and, you know, again, I am not a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or somebody who can diagnose anyone with dyslexia, nor would I, but just, you know, if you're viewing this and you see hey, that sounds really similar. It's kind of just, I'm talking to you about my experience. So, you know, um, <laughs> don't um, take, I mean, don't take, uh, let's say take it with a grain of salt because sometimes I might be misinformed, but it's just generally how I have lived these symptoms. So kind of just a breakdown, a case study, if you will, um, so yeah, now that comes into like a big thing about communication. Your being on this earth, you know, trees communicate with each other. They know when there's, I don't know what trees do, but I know that they have been said to communicate with each other. There are even trees that do not touch because I think they're called like polite trees. I don't know. Um, you know, wolves communicate with each other in a pack. They swap roles. And all these sorts of things, chimps, you know, communicate with body language and sounds and all those sorts of things. So naturally humans need to communicate and have been communicating for since the dawn of humanity I suppose and even before, you know, homo sapiens. Um, <laughs> gosh I sound so hoity-toity, but I've read sapiens so I mean, I know it all now. I'm actually half read it. That's a lie. <laughs> but I'm gonna finish it. See, that's the thing with dyslexia is you usually uh, reading is very fatiguing. You know, you get very fatigued and you can only read so much. But if you really like a book, you know, you're gonna read it. You're just gonna push through that pain and you're gonna read it. But I've never ever been a reader. I always picture books and movies. So I am a big movie buff. Um, but yes. <laughs> Anyway, I am not even answering what I'm saying. So basically, communication is a really important part of being a functional human um, in society. You know, you, excuse me, I need to use the restroom. I would like to get past you so I can get the pasta off the shelf, please. Can you move? 
And you know, you say it nicely, of course, and if you didn't, or if you did something that was deemed wrong in some sort of a culture, that's a difference of communication. Um, and, uh, yeah, so when you're trying to communicate with somebody verbally, I find that I run into a lot of issues <laughs> with that. And yeah, it's tiring. I often run short of breath because I'm like, it's like a computer running without a fan. Like it's going to overheat some at some point and just implode. And that's when a lot of anger comes out because, you know, you feel very infantile and you're trying to communicate with somebody and uh, the message just isn't getting across because you don't have, well personally, for an example, like I have always traditionally in my history, like for my past, I have not put a lot of time and effort into developing a vocabulary. Yeah, so I have had to work on that and I spent the last year trying to develop some mashed up version of what I think are the correct artistic uh, terms or the like correct art terms for my essays, for my artist statements, um, just so that I can tell other people like what my work is about and um, so that they can like actually kind of get an understanding of where I'm coming from, just like if you read a movie description or a book blurb. I don't know what it's called. See, I don't even have that sort of um, vocabulary. Like, I know it's. Is it a blurb on the back of a novel? Anyway, but I know when it's in an art form, it's usually a diptych or, um, you know, an artist statement. Education is a privilege, and I feel really lucky to have been able to make it into tertiary education because you know um and you don't want you don't have to go to university but not everyone gets to finish high school um and you know i'm very lucky that i kept doing it and you're know, finishing high school now in brisbane at least that's where i did my high school time um, you know, you don't actually need to finish. You could do a TAFE course or um, be, get a trade in hairdressing or veterinarian school or cooking, anything like that. And you know, you don't really need to have grade 12 education. But you know, it does help. It's good. It's always good to, for me personally, it was really important that I proved to myself that I could complete something. Um, but on that same note, I really do wish that I had have done a, you know, a trade so that I had a skill <laughs> when I graduated, but that's totally not even important to dwell on, because I can do one. I can do one again. I mean, I'll have to pay for it, but I can still do it. At least I think. I don't know. So yeah, and see, that's, that, that not being able to communicate can cause, has, for me, caused a lot of issues, and if um, if you know you don't have the skills to be able to communicate with somebody, it can get a bit frustrating um, because they're just not understanding where you're coming from. Um, and again, with that um, comes problems with remembering sequences, which my God, I have issues with like. This is why this format, today I have recorded at least five videos, maybe a bit less, maybe four, um, a bunch of different versions so that I can kind of cut out all of the noise of what I want and, you know, of what I want to say and that's probably when people would say, write it down, but it doesn't always work for me. I usually just need to just talk and talk and talk until my message comes across, I suppose. Uh, and then I transcribe it in written form. So, you know, again with dyslexia, sometimes things work backwards 
instead of the way that it traditionally goes. And that comes in, that ties back into sequencing. Because there are a certain sequence of rules. It could be, you know, vertically down, or like, <laughs> just like thinking, you know, if somebody sets out a bunch of rules for you, it's one, two, three, four, five. But you could do five, four, three, two, one, and it wouldn't matter. You would get the job done. You just do it differently. And, you know, people who don't have dyslexia probably still do that, but when you do have dyslexia, it's a often in a lot of different aspects of life rather than just sequencing and like lists and that sort of way. Um, so yeah, everyone's different. Um, and again, depending on how much dyslexia, like how severe your dyslexia is, if it's small, that could be, you know, one of the big parts of it. Um, but for me, that's just kind of like always been there, it always happened. And, um, you know, it's not quite the biggest problem, but it does cause a lot of issues. I can't remember dates, um, like days of the calendar, but I can know dates. So, you know, <laughs> but I, sometimes I can't remember a lot of what belongs on the calendar and it's, it's very discombobulating. Um, yeah, so the inability to sound out pronunciations of an unfamiliar hundred <laughs> percent like yeah that's pretty hard and embarrassing especially when you're still in school and like the teachers call on you to you know do those weird like class reading <laughs> readings of like I remember we did like we would all read Shakespeare and um, again like with dyslexia when you do something often and a lot you figure out a way to, to accommodate your, you know, the way your brain functions. And um, because I did drama and I did drama excellence, which was like, <laughs> they called it drama excellence, but it was like, you know, um, like when you're like really dedicated to dramas, we would go to rehearsals all the time, you do. So I was doing two plays instead of one. And I also did. Okay, so my camera just cut out. Sorry about that. It it overheats. Um, I think it's getting a little old. Right. <laughs> I have a lot of things that I need to buy. A new computer, a new camera. But it's still kicking, so it's great. It's good. We can do it. Alright, let's just move on from whatever I was saying. <sighs> Spending an unnaturally... Oops, and see again, <laughs> unusually long time completing tasks that involve reading or writing. Also, for me, it comes into speech. It takes me a very long time to speak. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that one is pretty intense because like time gets away from you really fast, um, just naturally in life. So yeah, it's like really hard to keep track of. And then let's move on to teens and adults. <laughs> so this is kind of where my most recent experience lies because I've just, you know, grown out of my teen years and I'm just entering adulthood so it's like a perfect little time to reminisce on what happened in my education. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, reading difficulties, can't, like, it's difficult to read out loud, which I have done a lot of practice on. Um, I'm still not good because I let it slip for a few years. Um, so yeah, like anything with practice, you get much better and so on and so on. Slow, labor, and well that's the same thing. <laughs> Problem spelling, yes, yes, that, that is life as an adult. <laughs> Avoiding activities that involve reading. And I think this is kind of like really sad. It really sucks because you know you want to read because it's a really fulfilling type of thing and it took me a really long time to sort of formulate what it's like in envisioning what these words and these sentences put together again it's in a sequence so you know sentencing it's like it, yeah I can't even explain it because it's going to take me like five minutes to break down what I'm trying to say 
but you know Sally goes to the shop and then they like go and describe the shop the shop was dimly lit and like blah 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 and there was a shop attendant and it was late at night and like all those sorts of stuff you know setting the scene and whatever writers do uh, that can be really hard to picture and it's hard for me personally I'm not sure what it's like for anyone else but that's why it takes so long reading because you're trying to formulate what these words could be um, and what they mean and the connotations behind them and you know why the, uh, the author is using this word or whatever yeah, so that's kind of for me why it takes so long, and then you like reread the sentences again, and then you just like, fuck, like I'm done with this. Like I just, <laughs> I need a break. My brain hurts. Um, mispronouncing names or words, problem solving, or problems retrieving words, mm -hmm. and that's why it's hard to communicate when you have dyslexia sometimes, and it's really bad because, well, for me it's really bad um, speech wise. Uh, and yeah, it's hard to sort of, you know, pretend you have this encyclopedia of words inside your brain. It's hard to like, flip a page open and be like, yep, that's the word I need, that's the definition. And so you'll swap them around and interchange them with things that are really close, but not quite the word. Trouble understanding. <laughs> oh, I missed this one last time. This one's really, really accurate. Okay, so this one is... Trouble understanding jokes or expressions that have a meaning not easily understood for the specific words slash idioms, such as piece of cake meaning easy. And this ties into why it's often described, you know, on websites like this that people with dyslexia have social issues, which I'm pretty sure it's down here as a complication. Yeah, it says social problems. Um, and so, you know, you'll be having a conversation with someone and they'll say this idiom or phrase, you know, whatever, um, and like a piece of cake. Um, or there is so much Aussie slang that I just don't get. I don't get it. Like, um, I can't even think of one that I don't get. I'm going to Google common Australian phrases. And that's another thing that really helped me, is just Google. <laughs> it's just Google everything. And really, like, try and understand, like, the etymology behind words. That's really helped me in these sorts of things. Um, <laughs> to kind of go, okay, well, these words together have meant this. And it, it's just building up your own, it's like a muscle, you know? So, building up your brain muscles. <laughs> okay. Um... So some of these top ones, like I don't even know what the, these are, and I haven't born in Australia. I, I mean, I'm born in Australia. I haven't lived anywhere else for an extended period of time. <laughs> so, but also sometimes not. Not every Australian knows this, and it's you know in different parts of Australia, like regional areas or city slang. Or Wrap your laughing gear round that. Okay, this is from CNN. I don't trust CNN. Let's look at something else. Oh my god. AustraliaExplorer.com. I don't know if this is a safe site. Like, amber fluid, apparently. Now, these might not even be anything that people use. It means, like, amber fluid, me, fluid means beer, apparently, according to Australian Explorer. Never heard anyone say that in my life. Right, we may, I'll wrap this up, I think. <laughs> it's been 30 minutes, and I'm not a very good editor. Um, Jesus Christ, some of these... Wow, okay, this one. Drink with the flies. To drink alone. I just... 
I didn't know that, but now that I think about it, it makes perfect sense. And so if you were like in these natural conversations with somebody, if you were at a bar, and they were saying, oh, you know, Jono over there, he's drinking with the flies, ain't he? Or something, you know? And you'd be like, the f drinking with the flies? And you'd, you'd be sitting there just like, why, why have you never, like, and you may not have ever heard it before, but like, sometimes with Australian slang, you can just kind of piece it together. Like, dead set. I didn't know what that meant before I was like at school. Truth, the truth, of course, so easy. <laughs> so, it's really hard to even connect with your own culture when you can't even understand it because I'm not, I'm not at all saying this is what happens to everybody, but that really stu stood out to me as something that is just really small and simple, but you know, when you're within your own culture or within somebody, you know, they say these words and, and it's everyone knows what it means and you're just sitting there like <laughs> lost in conversation. It can be a bit disorientating. But, you know, difficulty summarising a story. I have so much evidence of that. <laughs> um, trouble learning a foreign language. Difficulty memorising. Difficulty, difficulty doing math problems. And that has come into why I've, you know, that's come into my job history a lot, is that you, I have to deal with money. And it's very, it took, like, you know, things just take time. And when you do have dyslexia, people need to understand that you are entitled or to this extra time because that's just how you work. Like, people say nobody's entitled to anything, but, you know, it's just common decency to let somebody have that time so that they can, you know, have a fighting chance and uh, just like common courtesy really. But I've had a lot of people um, fire me because I can't do things fast enough and you know, you explain to them that you have dyslexia and you just need a little bit of time and often they'll, they'll give you some time but it's not enough. You know, that's case to case, what have you, and I've actually had customers abuse me because I couldn't count their change fast enough, and that's just, you know, not everyone is that kind of customer, so, um, but that's a story for a whole nother day, and that is, I think it's like, what, 40 minutes almost, almost an hour, so yeah, this is my first ever consistent video, I'm pretty proud of myself. It is very hard as a dyslexic person to try and put things cohesively together. Um, but yeah, I mean, being dyslexic is not my whole identity. I have a lot of other interests, but it's really something that I would love to talk to people about and share and, you know, yeah, that's life. And I hope you enjoyed this, if you, anyone does watch it, <laughs> wherever I put it, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, so I um, found that really, really good that I could get that across, and I'm pretty happy with what I shared. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you ever do feel like you have dyslexia, or you related to any of these, um, traits, uh, you know, check out the Mayo Clinic, um, just basically Google dyslexia, you know, your country wherever your city or whatever is, um, you know, it's not, it's not like a bad thing, <laughs> it's actually pretty awesome, you can think about other things really uniquely, and it helps in, like, when you're thinking spatially, I find, and yeah, so there are little ups and downs to everything, and you know, you'll probably find something that, you know, your dyslexia helps you with, um, so yes, if you think that maybe this is something that you have or you relate to, thank you for relating with me, um, if that's how you say it, but like, you know, if you feel like this is you and you're not diagnosed, definitely do your research, talk to your family or whoever is available to you to offer you support because it can be a bit draining trying to find help. Um, yeah, so what I did was I just went and I got tested by a doctor who did, ran a bunch of like 
tests on me, not like elaborate or anything, but like, you know, did a bunch of cognitive tests, spelling tests, reading tests, writing tests, math tests, um, even did coding. Um, and yeah, it's really, really nice when you actually do get diagnosed and you have something to be like, yes, it's actually good, we can move on, we can learn from this. But yes, um, definitely I'm not a doctor, so book an appointment with your trusted doctor. And thank you for tuning in. I hope to make some more videos about more intricacies of what it is like living with these cognitive traits, I suppose.